Blood testing for allergies and food sensitivities, that's what I'm discussing today. Ask Yuri, you've got a health and fitness question? I've got an answer. Hey guys, Yuri came here. I've got a question from my Facebook page once again that was posted a couple little while ago. This is from Rick and he wants to know about blood testing for allergies. Um, he specifically, I'm just gonna kind of abbreviate the question here. He says, I recently received the results from an IgG and IgA test. It shows I'm allergic to eggs, but I love eggs. Are these tests accurate, the real deal, or is there a margin of error? That's a great question because there's something in there that he said that gave away the answer. So first of all, before I get to the answer, let me define this blood testing stuff. So IgG is a type of um, antibody that detects food sensitivities. Okay, it's the IgG antibodies are mainly found in the digestive tract along with IgA. IgA is the secretory or secretory, however you want to pronounce it, um, antibody that lines itself along the mucous membranes in your digestive tract. And it's, it's part of the defense system against pathogens and, and things that shouldn't be coming into the body. So it's a very, very important antibody to have in decent amounts, otherwise you can get things like leaky gut, adrenal fatigue are all related to lower amounts of IgA. Um, most commonly, IgE is the blood test that your doctors would do for a full-blown food allergy. So I'm assuming that if you did an IgD te IgG test and an IgA test, that was probably along the lines of a food sensitivity test. Now his results said that he's allergic to eggs. Now, if you're allergic to eggs, that's a big difference from being sensitive to eggs, okay? So an IgG test will pick up on a food sensitivity. So in this case, assuming he meant IgG, he would have a sensitivity to eggs. Now that could be the egg whites, could be the egg yolk, we're not too sure. An IgE test, again, this is something you would do at your medical office the, or your medical doctor's office. The IgG stuff is usually done at a naturopathic clinic or some type of alternative center. The IgE picks up on the full-blown allergy. So if you have uh, an allergy to peanuts, anaphylactics, that would be picked up as an IgE antibody. Okay, So this is an immediate full-blown allergy to a food. If you've got an allergy to eggs, you'll know it's pretty much instantaneously if you have the egg. Okay, So I'm assuming this is an IgG test. Now let's assume that it is just a food sensitivity. The trick with food sensitivities is that they don't really display themselves right away. So you might have eggs today and exhibit the symptoms tomorrow. So how do you know that it came from the eggs, right? So you can see how this becomes tricky. So what you need to understand with the IgG, and this, this, is, this is where he kind of gave it away, is that I love eggs, okay? I love eggs. And when I saw that, I was like, well, no wonder you have a sensitivity to them because here's how it works, guys. The foods that you consume the most often and crave as well are the very foods you are sensitive to, okay? Let me repeat that. The very foods that you eat most often are the very foods your body is most sensitive to. What that means is that you need to vary your diet. So if you have four, six, 10, 12 eggs a day, every single day, I guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt really that it's only a matter of time before your body develops a sensitivity and potentially a full-blown allergy to eggs. Why does this happen? Because when you eat the same food over and over and over again, it depletes your body's enzymes that work on that specific food. So if you have eggs every single day, you are depleting the enzymes that are necessary to digest eggs. Okay, so you see how that works? You have lowering, lowering, lowering levels of enzymes and enzymes help digest the food. So if you don't have enough enzymes, you can't digest the food properly. And if that happens, then you start getting irritation and inflammation at the gut level and that is how we start to develop food sensitivities, food allergies, autoimmune disorders, and so forth. So there's a couple other things here. So basically the foods you eat most often, okay? Secondly, the foods that sit in your digestive system for the longest amount of time, okay? That's another big thing because even if you eat foods very often, you may not be getting rid of them. So if they're sitting in your intestinal tract for a long time, they can begin to putrefy, irritate the lining of the gut and cause all sorts of issues that we don't want. Okay, so that's why when you said, I love eggs, that kind of gave it away for me because one of the biggest things you can do, one of the best things you can do for your health is to rotate your foods. Don't eat the same thing every single day, okay? And if you are eating, let's say six eggs a day, I have no idea if you are, cut it down, okay? Chop that down to three, rotate them with some other stuff and that will do a really, really um, 
it'll, it'll go a long way for, for your health. And over time, what you'll find is that as you eat less of those foods, your body is able to build its enzyme bank account back up for those specific foods, and you'll find that your sensitivity to eggs over time will lessen. All right, so are these tests the be all and end all? Not necessarily, I mean, I did an IgG test and it came back negative on 200 and some odd foods. Many of them I know I don't respond well to. For instance, wheat, dairy, stuff like that. So there are other mechanisms inside the body that can uh, play a role with respect to food sensitivities that aren't picked up on IgG tests. We won't talk about those in this video, but it is a good place to start with these different allergy types of tests because at least it gives you a sense of where some things might be kind of on or off and you can start to make some adjust, uh, adjustments based on that. All right, Rick, so thank you very much for your question. Hopefully this has helped you out. And for everyone else, if you have a question about fitness, nutrition, health, uh, travel, how to bring up kids, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Join me on Facebook, the URL is below this video, post it on the wall, and I'll be sure to answer it, hopefully in a video, in the coming weeks, um, as I do with all these videos. So thanks again for tuning in, I will see you in the next video.